making a Stuart model steam plant. Part 93. I made a pair of gaskets for the Stuart S50 steam chest. After testing the S50 I show how to assemble the piping for the engines in the correct order. Then finally I fit the lamps using different bolts. I don't need to speak over this first part, it's just the S50 running showing how its new gaskets don't leak. Originally, when I was assembling this plant, I used an elastic band to line up the Stuart S50 flywheel with the generator's pulley. And the good news is that it actually works, because I'm using LED type bulbs, the load on the dynamo is far less. I don't recommend using this elastic band, although it does work perfectly well, but as I made a leather belt for the job, I will fit that. This episode is really for the benefit of the owner, to show him how to reassemble it when he receives it. The silicone rubber tube exhaust pipe is intentional. The last thing I wanted was a short and very rigid connection between the top of the double 10 to the condenser. I didn't think it was a good idea to apply side pressure to the double 10 cylinders. The order of assembly is important. This is the exhaust pipe from the S50 to the condenser, and this needs to be fitted after the steam pipe from the turret on the boiler to the S50 is in place. Originally I got it wrong, I fitted the exhaust pipe first and here I'm removing it so I can fit the steam inlet pipe. And that's why this video is so important. I built the plant but it's been a while since I put it together. No excuses, I just forgot the sequential order. I connected the S50 steam inlet from the turret, as you can see here, to the TP steam inlet on the engine. Once again, for the benefit of the owner, do not over tighten these union nuts. Once I fitted the steam inlet pipe to the S50, then I can fit the exhaust pipe from the S50 to the condenser. I know it looks simple on the video, but when you're faced with just a box full of random pipes, it's more difficult than you think. This clip shows the exhaust outlet from the S50 and once again I'm tightening the union nut but not too tight. Not finger tight though, I'm probably giving the wrong impression. You do need to use a spanner but be gentle with it. To make it easier, these pipe runs use different size union nuts. The ones on the condenser in this case are 5 sixteenths by 32 whereas the ones at the engine end are quarter by 40 the union nuts on the brass exhaust pipe that goes from the condenser to the chimney are 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. I haven't showed the fitting of this in detail because it's obvious which way around it goes. Fitting the drain pipes to the sump. This connector allows a piece of silicone rubber tube to be fitted to drain the water from the sump. It's fitted with an o-ring and it really doesn't need tightening very much at all. And it's not under any pressure, so it doesn't need a hose clip. I'm using a piece of M6 internal diameter silicone rubber tubing. And I will supply some of this with the plant. That's the outlet from the sump sorted out. Now the inlets. The first one is from the drain tap of the condenser. Nothing difficult here, and it's the only pipe that fits in this position. There is another drain pipe to the sump that takes the oil and water residue from underneath the double ten and feeds it into the sump. Here it is connected. Another pipe to go to the sump is the water gauge blowdown pipe, which is used for clearing air bubbles in the water gauge. The next pipe to fit is the steam inlet to the double ten. This pipe, like the S50 steam inlet pipe, uses quarter by 40 threads per inch union nuts at both ends. That's it for the steam piping. This job was a bit of a pain. The hexagon bolts are slightly too short and very difficult to fit. Also, as they have been screwed into the wood of the baseboard, they're very easy to cross thread. 
I was really concerned about this because the lamps are quite tall, and once bolted down, if you accidentally caught them with your hand, they could be pulled out of the baseboard, so I'm altering the layout. On each lamp base, only three of the bolts hold the lamp to the baseboard. One bolt in each of the bases will be a hexagon. This is to designate that it's the electrical connector. This is much easier. 4BA dome head bolts that are a bit longer and they're screwing perfectly. And now the lamp standards are firmly fitted to the baseboard. In this episode, I did not show the plugging together of the electrical connectors because it's only recently that I made and fitted them. The final part of this episode is a compressed air test to see if everything works. And all seems to be okay. The double 10 v is a bit of a rattler, but I didn't build it and that's just the way it is. I fitted the reversing gear, which was actually quite problematic. In these clips that you're watching, even when the engines are running fast, they're only being supplied with about 30 pounds per square inch of compressed air. That's it for this episode. The next one is the final one, which will be the live steam test. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.